Welcome to a beautiful day in Philadelphia, and they'll sell out the Leah Cora Center on the campus of Temple University. For an important Atlantic 10 game as the VCU Rams take on the Temple Owls. VCU playing for a share of first place and thus a piece of the conference title. Temple needing a win against a ranked opponent for their tournament resume. And this is a place to do it against the number 21 Rams. Hi everyone, Kevin Harlan alongside Reggie Miller and Dan Bonner. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. Guys, let's uh, put this game into perspective for our viewers. Well, this is the first meeting between these two teams. So if your shock is smart, the magic number is 15. When they force 15 plus turnovers, they're 24 and 0. Kevin and Temple now is among the best teams in the country at protecting the basketball, and you already said it. They're trying to win their way into the NCAA tournament. I want you guys to think back to the offseason when I came in the weight room. You guys were about to lift weights, and I told you we were moving to the Atlantic 10. Think back to how you felt, and I loved your response. You said, Coach, we're going to win it. We're going to win it. But you know what happened is, like they always do, the media questioned us. They said, is VCU big enough? They said, is VCU talented enough? Will Havoc work in a better league? Didn't they? That's what they said. And now you guys have put us in this unbelievable position that we're in right now with a tremendous opportunity in front of us to go win a championship. Now, you guys know what it's going to take to win. Temple's a good team. They're at home. It's senior day. They got a lot on the line. But we got this right here. We know our formula and we know that it works. We follow it for 40 minutes no matter what. We're gonna do this. Guys, how many of us is it gonna to take to win? Everybody. Who's gonna win? We are. Who's gonna win? We are. Let's go do it. Let's go. 35-year-old head coach Jacques Smart has two straight NCAA tournament appearances with a third on deck and he's gonna start a sophomore. Trevian Graham, the leading scorer at over 15 points a game. Temple's going to have senior day today. All seniors starting in the lineup, including leading scorer Khalif White, all led by head coach Fran Duffy, a two-time A-10 coach of the year. Now time for the Northwestern Mutual planning for success. We mentioned how Temple can gain some ground for the NCAA tournament with the win over number 21 BCU. And he knows the reality. Bottom line is we got to win. You know, the committee is going to pick the best 37 at large team. Maybe we'll be good enough to go. We've got to take care of our own tournament, certainly. That's what we've got to work on right now. So it's right in front of Temple. A win today would be huge for that team as we take a look at our officials and Michael Stevens with uh, all tournament experience here with Stevens, Stiens, and Roberts. Stevens has officiated the final four. So a good crew, a sellout crowd, and away we go in Philadelphia with the ball. BCU at 24 and 6. And Reddick with the miss, picked up by Steve Randall. And here comes Khalif Wyatt to O'Brien. He's a transfer and a senior and foul as he takes it inside. Dan, I don't know about you, but I was ready to go get my sneakers laced up listening to Shaka <laughs> Smart right there. Talking about one of the best young basketball minds in college game. So, it's quite a motivator. Quite a motivator, Reg, absolutely. Troy Daniel has picked up the personal foul for BCU, and at the free throw line is Jake O'Brien. He is from Weymouth, Massachusetts, and he is a transfer from Boston University. Kevin, and that foul on Daniels is actually an important one because he doesn't want to pick up his second. He is the main three-point weapon for VCU. And as much as we talk about their havoc defense, they need their three-point shooters to be really effective. Rob Brandenburg gets it off to Troy Daniels, and that's who Dan was just talking about. The sheriff first place in the Atlantic 10 at stake. This VCU team from Richmond, Virginia has won eight of their last nine in three consecutive games and Reddick across the lane. O'Brien with the block and picked up by Scooty Randall. Well, swarming defense of themselves by the Temple Owls. DeLeo. TJ DeLeo with an outside shot that won't go. Nice rebound inside by Hollis Jefferson and O'Brien for three. And that's what he does. And Kevin, interestingly enough, VCU is not a very good defensive rebounding team. They're going to have to keep the taller Temple Owls off the board. Defense is the calling card for the Rams. Temple building some steam. Temple's gone to five consecutive NCAA tournaments. Daniels, a terrific three-point shooter, as we've mentioned. Reddick will control inside, and Theus is the playmaker. It was knocked away by 
It's Khalif White and Graham with another rebound pulled down by Scooty Randall. Really impressed here early on by Fran Duffy and the defensive identity of the Temple Owls really getting after the VCU Rams. And there you see that trap and it's after a miss. So VCU's a team, they don't just trap after they make. They can get after you on a miss as well. Two minutes gone here in the first half from Philadelphia. This is the leading score in the Atlantic 10, Wyatt. And it shows you why. It oh. makes them great, too. At that 6'4 frame size, uses his body beautifully against smaller defenders. The Lexus Command Performance Sales Event has begun. Featuring the powerful GS. Just when you thought you had experienced performance, a new ride comes along and changes everything. Get great values on your favorite Lexus models during the Command Performance Sales Event. This is the pursuit of perfection. Well, the tournament committee will be getting ready to take a look at resumes like this from colleges all over the country. And Kevin, it, the important thing about Temple there is that RPI of 44, that's that's okay. The, the strength of schedule is okay. They've got three wins against top 50 RPI teams, nine wins against top 100 RPI teams. But you saw what Fran Dumphy said before the game. They gotta keep winning. Well, I wouldn't be surprised if there's five teams from this A team that get a hard and strong look from the committee for the tournament. No changes either way out of that break. Daniels, the three-point marksman, knocks it in from outside. He has set the record for three-point shots made in a season at VCU. That's his 106th three-pointer on the, the season. Him along with Melvin Johnson, as you mentioned, Dan, the two best three-point shooters for the VCU Rams. Khalif Wyatt. Hollis Jefferson inside. And he was fouled as he went up high. And fouled on the play by the Rams and picked up for the second time by Daniel. Now you gotta know where Daniels is, and you cannot allow, you cannot, DeLeo leaves Daniels to help out. You simply can't do that. There you see TJ DeLeo, number 11. He's helping out against Travion Graham. You can't do that if Troy Daniels is the guy standing out on the perimeter. Here's Rolier Hollis Jefferson, a two year starter, senior from Chester, Pennsylvania. But as Dan was talking about moments ago, Daniels with foul troubles with one. Now he's got two, and we're not even three minutes into the game. Well, that's a huge blow if you're Shaka Smart and the VCU Rams. You're taking your best outside threat off the floor, bringing in one of the best defenders in Briante Weber. Offense for defense for Shaka Smart. Yeah, Briante Weber is a terrific defensive player. Yeah, but he can't shoot the three like Daniels can, and that three-point shooting really opens up the opponent's defense. Randall lost the ball. He's been picking up some steam. He missed last year with an knee injury. Important player for Fran Dumphy, who had most of his college coaching at Penn. He was there for 17 seasons. When John Cheney retires, and John Cheney, by the way, in the building today, they hire him. Yeah, but his fingerprints are all over this Temple University program now that he's a part of it. These young men really do respond to him and his teachings. VCU beat Richmond. A couple days ago, Brandenburg takes it inside. O'Brien climbs the ladder and picks it up. VCU took care of Richmond, 93-82. to 82. And Temple beat Fordham Wednesday by 19. So both coming off wins and trying to get that momentum going into the A-10 tournament, which happens this upcoming week in Brooklyn. My goodness, the pressure that Weber was putting on T.J. DeLua. It looked like there was a foul there on the shot by Khalif Wyatt. Question is, Dan, was that a... Was he behind the arc for three free throws? And Theus picks up a foul. They're signaling three free throws, and this is what's going to happen sometimes if you're Temple against VCU. It's not going to look pretty. It's going the ball's going to get fumbled around, but you finally get it in Wyatt's hand, and he is a guy who knows how to get to the free throw line from just about any place on the court, including from behind the arc. So here's Wyatt at the free throw line. Just a little bit of housekeeping here. They just changed Daniel's second foul to Graham, so Daniels has one still on the bench. Weber remains in the contest for VCU. Well, if you're shot to smart, that's good news. Because you mentioned Troy Daniels, the, the best shooter for that, this VCU Rams. Now he's not lost in this first half today. So no one has two fouls. 
Wyatt at the line. Norristown, Pennsylvania. Rare miss by Wyatt at the free throw line. As you mentioned, Dan, one of the more prolific free throw shooters in the A-10. Reggie, an A-10 play. Wyatt scores more than 40% of his team's points from the free throw. That's by amazing. Himself. That's amazing. Melvin Jensen now in the contest for VCU. Fields looking back at Shaka Smart. Himself a point guard at Kenyon College. Now it's off to Graham. Pick pocket around the play by Ryan. He'll come the other way. Graham in pursuit and inside to DeLeo. Great pass. DeLeo puts it in. Dan, you know the old adage, teams that press usually don't like to be pressed and ran against, and that's exactly what Temple, the start of this first half, is really coming at the VCU Rams. Reggie, one of the keys has been the Temple's man-to-man -man defense has been solid in that they haven't allowed VCU to get much penetration. Deontay Weber hit that last shot. And I'll tell you what, if Durante Weber's guarding you, get rid of the ball. There's no reason to fight that all the way up the court. Reddick is on Wyatt. Here's to T.J. DeLeo to Hollis Jefferson. Defense by Melvin Johnson. Picked up inside by Trevion Graham. It's pretty good ball movement there by Temple. Another shot didn't go down for Hollis Jefferson, but it's still pretty good ball movement against that pressure of the Rams. Yeah, it sure is. And Melvin Johnson. His first two, he was a freshman from Bronx, New York, went to St. Rice High School. That was close, went to St. Benedict's Prep, and he's been a terrific find for this program. Hollis Jefferson again left three to five. And I'll tell you what, if, if you're going to beat VCU, that's a shot right there you have to make. Absolutely. Back to back shots there by Hollis Jefferson, wide open, that you've got to convert against that pressure. Yeah, they beat the pressure. Yes. They got Hollis Jefferson a shot that he normally makes. You beat that pressure, you've got to make him pay for it by scoring the basket. VCU 3 of 7, and now 4 of 8. That's a good looking 3 by Darius Theus, who's in the VCU record books for assists and steals, and truly the team leader. And here's some of that full court pressure that so exemplifies what this VCU team is all about. And sure enough, they turn it over right there. They force more turnovers than any other team in college basketball. That was a lazy pass there by TJ DeLeo, recognizing that. The VC Rams, they close so quickly defensively, you've got to have crisp passes against that pressure. Theus over Wyatt. Oh, goodness. He's at two in a row, and it's a 9 nothing run for VCU. Got to make short, crisp passes. Yes. You can't throw the ball long. And this is a guy who you want to have the ball, I do believe. Off of Brian and Alice Jefferson, so a turnover right here for Temple. Temple was up 12-3, then a 9-0 run by VCU, tied the game right now. You know, interesting looking at that graphic. The VCU Rams this season already beat Belmont and Florida Gold Coast, but the team that Belmont beat last night to move on to Wichita State beat VCU. Now you understand the challenges that this committee for, uh, is going to be forced with when all these teams are beating one another that are right around that mid-major level. Owls have gone to five consecutive NCAAs. They are the defending A-10 regular season champion from a season ago. VCU trying to get a share of it with a win today here in Philadelphia. Oh, oh, oh what a beautiful catch. Riddick knocks it down and a terrific, terrific setup. Johnson is all over Hollis Jefferson, as is Weber. And outside for Khalif White, the A-10 leading scorer. And VCU felt like they could get the ball inside to Javante Reddick. And I think, Reggie, that's called getting it inside pretty effectively. A screen out at the top, and Reddick just goes to the basket. Yeah, miscommunication there on the backside there with the temple. Daniels gets the Wyatt miss right there. VCU comes the other way, having made their last five consecutive shots. And Johnson got the screen from Daniels and puts up a three. Oh, my goodness. They just come at you at waves. Whether it's Johnson, Daniels, Theus, off to a, a fast start offensively. 14-0 run right now by VCU. You see those kind of passes, those lobs? That's exactly what Shaka Smart is looking for in that press. And teams throw those lobs 
it's easy for the defense to get back and, and for them to recover. And what I think we have seen, Reggie, here during this VCU spurt is not only VCU forcing some turnovers, but the Rams forcing Temple to play faster than yeah. Temple wants to play. That last shot by Scooty Randall, not a good shot in transition. Randall in Atlantic 10 play is only He's under 40% from three, and he's worse than that when he's shooting it quickly, so he needs to get himself set before he shoots the ball. Brandenburg trying to guard Wyatt, and a travel called right in there. And speaking of Temple and all the turnovers that they thought they would face against VCU, Temple just does not turn the ball over. They only average 11 a game, which is 11th in the country. Well, and here's the problem. Recognizing that this Havoc style of pressure is going to be coming your way, and speaking with Fran Duffy yesterday during practice, you got to understand, you cannot panic. They're going to come up with steals, but it's what you do after your second and third turnover that really determines the fate of your game. They can't thing, get teams frazzled. And one of the things you have to be able to do is score. Yeah. And Temple has been missing here lately. Graham, the leading scorer, puts it up and in. He's averaging 15 points a game. Fifth leading scorer in the Atlantic 10 coming into this afternoon. Look how long guest is on that ball pressure long arms active athletic and you have to have small and power forwards that can run the floor Wyatt first in a lot of shots this afternoon Lee is in the game for the first time he was the usual starting guy in the middle but he's battling a hit pointer it was saved on the play by Theus and here comes VC right now in a 16 to nothing run and they've done it with, they've started it with defense, but they forced Temple to play a little bit more quickly. Across the lane, Reddick. Takes his time, doesn't rush that shot. And he's hit two like that today. Well, one thing early on that I'm seeing today from the bigs of VCU, they're much more athletic than the Temple Isle bigs, especially around that basket area. Cummings has come in now at the point, along with Wyatt, and they'll both handle the ball in the backcourt for the out. Temple's got to get the ball close to the basket. They've been settling for those perimeter jumpers. Easier said than done, Dan. Temple scoreless in the last nine possessions. That looks like it might be in the cylinder, but right away, Jared Gast is a sophomore, is the one to knock it, and no call made. Brandenburg had it knocked away by Cummings. Wyatt. To Cummins and rejected inside by Brandenburg. I tell you what, that's a heck of a play there by Brandenburg. Even though this is a foul right here, to be able to recover and at least get a hand on the basketball, that's pretty that impressive. That's a whole different thing, like a Spike oh, Lee. Oh my goodness. Who's your big buddy, right, Reg? Are you, mean, you kidding me? That's a. If, if I'm talking smart right now, I'm burning that right hand of mine. To have that little hobbit come to practice and spoil everything that's good for you, Shaka, that's a downgrade. But a big deal to the kids, nonetheless. Yes, it is. Yeah. No, I'm not yeah. Spike is a good man. He's a good man. Now let's take a look at what this VCU team has put together. They, of course, are a team that was in the CAA and now in the Atlantic 10. They had dropped out of the AP rankings, then they beat number 20 Butler. Routed, and, uh, routed. Exactly, I mean, crushed it. And that got him back in, they're number 21 this week in the AP poll. I'll tell you what, uh, Kevin, Dan, the style of play, this Havoc style, it is tailor-made for the tournament because it's so hard to prepare for. Obviously, in league play, when you are facing your conference foes at least twice, you get time to somewhat look and go over tape. But when it's a one and done situation come tournament time, that's why whoever draws and whatever draw the VCU Rams are in, this style of play is beautiful to watch and it's tough to, to match up for. Shot clock down to 15. Brandon Moore gets it on top to Graham, and here's Melvin Johnson. Good screen right there by DJ Haley and picked up inside by Anthony Lee. Coming. He lost the ball. Another turnover. It's the sixth. Whether you're, whether it's after a basket or after a miss, you just can't dribble it into a crowd of black shirts because they're going to flick it away, and that's exactly what happened. Brandenburg from outside puts it in. He's a junior, and he's averaging 10 points a game. And that's the problem. You can't turn the basketball over because when you're done, when you do, 
They are so potent offensively. Anthony Lee couldn't get it. Wayne comes the other way, facing some pressure himself, and Theus on the side to Brandenburg. Oh, good steal right there by Hollis Jefferson. And Cummings floating inside and floating two. They had missed seven shots in a row, Kevin, and I think actually Temple's done an okay job handling the pressure, but you have to make shots. Now, now they've got to dig in and get some stops and try to climb back in the game. This past season made a record number of three-point shots, so that has been a huge part of their arsenal. Graham twisting inside, can't get it. Alice Jefferson fighting for the loose ball. That will go on Temple. Well, tonight on the amazing race, travel to exotic Bali, where the heat is on and the surf is up. New episode, that's tonight, 8, 7 Central, only on CBS. Hollis Jefferson picks up his first personal foul today for the Temple Owls. Look at the wave of players that's coming in for Soccer Smart. You're bringing back Reddick and Briante Weber. Quinton DeCozzi has come in for Temple. Reddick will tap it up and in. He just came off the bench and quickly heard from. Tell you what, the bigs of VCU are so much quicker off the floor in this first half in the Temple Bigs. Got to put bodies on people. Wyatt, scoring well. Time returning score in the A-10. Six points in the first half. Speaking of putting bodies on people, that's some body that he puts on defenders. It's Graham inside, and he gets it to go. At 21 against Richmond the other night. Has six points here this afternoon from Washington, D.C. I'm not quite sure there's another on-ball defender than the sophomore, Brianta Weber. He picks up the foul right there. If you're talking about coast-to-coast, coast, 90 feet, he is right in the chest of the offensive player. And yeah. last year, he was the same, too, because he and Theus forced more turnovers, had the highest total percentage-wise of any set of teammates in college basketball. And the problem is, if you say, okay, I'm not going to dribble it up to court against Weber, then he just comes and traps you and takes it away. And there's, again, they're going a little bit more quickly, yeah. Reggie, than I think they want to. And so that's a turnover that's caused by the pressure. And that's almost an unforced turnover right there because, as you just mentioned, when you get in that hurry-up situation right there, you, your main thought process is, I got to get to the rim quickly. And that's where Hollis Jefferson picks up the, the turnover. Daniels! Has just given VCU their biggest lead. Daniels has six, knocks down his second three, and VCU shooting 65% from the field. I'll tell you what, this guy can really still get the lead. Lee gets knocked it away. Weber picks it up. He's off to the races for VCU. Ahead it goes. Riddick and outside looking for Theus and threw it away. A lot of pride. That's great, man. You were telling me today as we're driving in, yeah, he's actually landed on an aircraft carrier 14 times, did you tell me? Yeah, I told him that I understand the physics behind getting off that doggone <laughs> aircraft carrier, but getting back on is something that's a little bit puzzling to me. But he's done it 14 times now. Having yeah, worked with Dan for so many years, I've heard stories about Kerry and Coleman, his two sons, many, many years, and uh, I know what great pride you take. Dan, congratulations to you and everybody. How fun. Comes Temple. Having won six consecutive games coming in. This is the first time they played VCU. Wyatt from way outside. O'Brien fighting with Riddick for the loose ball. And out of bounds it goes. And it will be off of Temple. I mean, that's a 27 footer there by Khalif Wyatt there. Now, I'm not quite sure that's exactly the kind of shot, especially coming out of a timeout that Fran Duffy was expecting. ECU getting Riddick inside, working on O'Brien. ECU will be the number two seed in the upcoming A-10 postseason tournament. Temple is trying to win today and thus get that first round bye, which is always coveted this time of year to get some rest for your team. Shoving inside. Maybe Riddick picked it up right there. Wednesday on CBS, two castaways clash in the biggest conflict in Survivor history. And a tribal council like you've never seen before. The new Survivor, Wednesday, 8, 7 Central. Only on CBS, O'Brien picks up his first. Well, if, if you're Fran Duffy, you're used to playing at a high level. I mean, they're third in scoring in Atlantic 10, right around 72 points. But you got to understand, that's exactly the way Shaka Smart and the Rams want to play. They want to speed you up. 
I'm not quite sure if your friend Duffy coming into today's game, you don't want to slow the tempo down, take some time off the shot clock to get the best available shot. They've taken some tough shots, Reggie, but I think they've missed some shots they normally make. There's a foul on that court. It'll be on BCU, picked up by Johnson. And it'll be the first on him. And this is a nice job by Khalif Wyatt. He sees the trap coming and he backs up with the dribble. That's exactly what Fran Duffy was telling us at practice yesterday. It's the back dribble, especially when you can see the, the trap of the Rams coming at you. A couple of back dribbles try to get the ball out of your hand. Guys, in the changing landscape of college sports, we have another team on the move. This is Temple's last season in the Atlantic 10, moving next season to the basketball half of what was the Big East. You know, we just mentioned that, that <laughs> coming out of the Colonial Athletic Association was VCU into the Atlantic 10. We've got teams coming and going. Sometimes it's hard to keep track of who's in and who's out. Well, and you've got Butler who came into this Atlantic 10. Now is getting ready to exit as well, maybe going to what was formerly known as the Big East. So there's a lot of shuffling going along the landscape of college basketball. I don't think necessarily the ball absolutely has dropped everywhere yet, Dan. <laughs> no. We're not at the we're not at the end of all no, that. No, no, no. It's all uh, predicated on dollars. We do know that. Brandenburg and Riddick looking at a pick oh, and roll. Oh, Brandenburg no. just jets right down the lane and Riddick taps it up and in. For this VCU team, so four from Riddick. Graham's got six. Six from Daniels. Seven leading everybody. And off the bench was Melvin Johnson. Riddick, the best rebounder in the Athletic Ten and the best offensive rebounder in the A10. We talked about the bigs of VCU so quick off the feet. The nice move by Brandenburg, but there's Reddick for the tip in. There's not any body on him, Dan. Well, wow, look at look at O'Brien. He's the one guarding Reddick. He yeah. goes to help out against the penetration. We mentioned that VCU wasn't a great defensive rebounding team. They are a really strong offensive rebounding team, and it's because of that penetration. You get dribble penetration, the defense comes to help. Nobody's available for the blockout. And you got to make free throws in this situation when your shots from the field aren't falling. And so Temple continues to struggle offensively. And this is a bad group against whom to struggle offensively. Across the lane, beautiful play, slicing for two. He's just given the Rams a VCU their biggest lead this afternoon. Look at the nice curl move here by Brandenburg. Just a couple dribbles, gets into the paint, feels the contact. I mean, this kid is sensational at feeling that contact down low and being able to finish in traffic. Tagosi picks up his first personal foul, and then here's Brandenburg at the line. This is VCU's first free throw attempt of the game. Well, they don't need it. They've been making it every day. <laughs> but, 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 you know, teams like this just want to keep the clock running. They don't, they don't want this. Kevin, it's hard to foul them if you can't catch them. And that's been the problem Good for Temple. Good point. I thought the most interesting thing there was that time number 22 O'Brien the guy we just showed you in the last replay went for the block shot that time he didn't so they get you one way or the other here's Khalif Wyatt all kinds of black jerseys around him O'Brien a three a quick three yeah did that look rushed to you Reggie yeah. looked rushed to me well, that's one of the things this full court press does it throws you out of your rhythm can you see taking on a team like VCU in the tournament and what it would do? It, it would give the coach gray hairs and send it bald, <laughs> one or the other. How do you prepare for them? There's no way. I mean, yesterday at practice, Fran Duffy had six guys trying to simulate the Havoc style of pressure defense. And there's just no way you can necessarily do that. Started from the floor, three or four. Oh, they've gone two or fourteen since they get them to drop right there. Khalif Wyatt puts it up and in. And he's got ten for the Owls. And the turnovers have been an issue, but Khalif Wyatt is the guy. <laughs> we talked about him before the game and how he can get open. Now, this isn't a lightning quick move. It's almost in slow motion, like he's playing down at the YMCA, but he just gets that big body in there protects the basketball and once he gets his head and shoulders by you he's so big you just can't make up the ground that's two missed free throws in this first half mm -hmm. by wyatt very very rare for him temple at home 13 and 3 this season 22 and 8 overall in the a10 
10, 10 and 5. Nice move by Graham, works into the defense of Randall. And he's got eight. You know what I love? Another thing about this soccer smart system. After the a made field goal, there's no celebrating. It's right into the press. Scooby Randall. Four and a half to play in the half from Philadelphia. Ryan. Good pass. Miles Jefferson. Defense right there by Guest. O'Brien a three. How much needed for They needed that. How many times, Reggie, have they gotten the ball inside and they haven't been able to score? Either because they just missed it, but more often than not because of the VCU pressure. Yeah, I'm going to give a lot of credit to the soccer smart and the Rams. Defensive pressure of blocking shots and swarming defense, especially in the paint area. Johnson from way outside. Oh, yeah, what a shot. Melvin Johnson is one of the top kids in the country. Ten points for him with that three. And we've got two of the best three-point shooters in college basketball on one team. And Melvin Johnson and Troy Daniels. You talk about these are NBA threes that they're making. Melvin Johnson originally signed with the University of Miami. Then he reopened the recruitment and he chose VCU. Not a bad choice there, no. young man. Either one. Cummings is in. Will Cummings taking the place of point guard on Fernandez. He was a four-year starter here at Temple, one of the best in the college game. And Brian gets up his second consecutive basket with a nice layup. Did a nice job getting position inside. He's got three or four inches on guests, and he used it effectively that time. Johnson again over O'Brien. Rebound by Scooty Randall. And in the hands of Cummings is a sophomore from Jacksonville. The Temple, Temple team earlier in the season beat then number three Syracuse. O'Brien missing the three and off of ECU. <laughs> VCU's led by as many as 16. Temple's led by as many as nine. Late first half here in Philadelphia. The Harlem Shake certainly is shaking up a lot of college campuses, and it's uh, not been formed to the people here that play for the Owls. <laughs> it's every place. <laughs> it's every place. Speaking of guys that can shake things up, coming up on the AT&T at the half, join Greg Gumbel, Greg Anthony, Doug Gottlieb, and Seth Davis for all the scores and highlights, plus the latest NCAA tournament news coming up on the AT&T at the half. Well, we know VCU leads the A-10 in scoring, but the three-point shot is kind of their calling card. Well, the way that the TCU, or excuse me, the Temple is doing that Harlem shake, that's how they're guarding the VCU Rams from beyond the arc. Very lazy, casual. Soccer smart and the VCU Rams. A lot of guys that can stretch the defense with that three-point shooting. VCU on the road, too. It's not just at home. VCU on the road. Dan, the second highest scoring team in college basketball, averaging over 79 points a game. And Shaka Smart's guys really have it going today, Kevin, because most of the time that scoring is based on their ability to force turnovers and score points off turnovers. But as we just showed you, they've made all their threes today. And if they're going to press like this and make threes, it's a long, yeah. a long afternoon for the opposition. Wyatt on the wing, two and a half to play in the half, and outside Scooty Randall. This last year with the knee. And pumps in a triple on his first basket this afternoon. They really need offense from Randall. He struggled most of this season. He's only in the last handful of games begun to find his gear. Hinton is now in. David Hinton is a senior. He's in for the Rams. Riddick with O'Brien defending. Rebound by Randall. So it can only be down 11 with under two minutes left in this first half today. And your friend Duffy and the way that the Rams have shot the basketball. Oh, yeah, that's a beautiful play. Oh, what a great court screw move inside by Wyatt. He's got 12. Theus. How do you stop that? <laughs> I know it's good. Even a defensive minded team on like VCU. And now you've gotten the, this Temple Owls crowd back into the ball game. A stop in the basket here would do big. Here's Riddick, who's had a nice afternoon working on O'Brien inside. Randall 
grabs onto his sixth rebound, and he was fouled on the play. Fouled by Melvin Johnson. And we talked about the fact that Temple's had a tough time scoring. Well, Khalif Wyatt hasn't had a tough time scoring. He may not be the quickest guy in the world, but whatever quickness he's got, he knows how to use it. He knows how to protect the ball with his body. And, yeah, that's a nice grin to have because that was a great shot. And he recognizes that he has a smaller defender in Darius Theus on him, so he's going to use his size at that 6'4 frame to shoot over him. Temple's on a 7 nothing run. Here's 77% free throw shooter Scooty Randall from Philadelphia Communications Tech High School. Tomorrow, Dave's all new with New York Mayor Michael Bloomberg. Plus, later this week, catch Jim Carrey and Steve Carell, followed by Craig Ferguson, only on CBS. VCU playing for a share of first place and thus a piece of the conference title. And Temple needing a win against a ranked opponent. They got one today in 21st ranked VCU for their tournament resume. As they try to secure a spot, Reggie, among the 68 teams. I'll tell you what, this minute 19 is going to be huge for Fran Duffy. You've got the deficit down to seven, but we know how potent offensively, especially in this first half today, VC Rams have been. VC was up by 16. Now the lead, as you see, is seven. Theus, no place to turn. Brandon Burke. Brandenburg shot. Tell you what, nice recovery there by Anthony Lee. I thought Brandenburg got away with the travel here with the little hop skip, but the recovery of Lee, impressive here to deny him an easy shot at the basket. Shot clock is at 10. Wide open is Graham. Lee on a hand on it. Picked up by the point guard, Will Cummings. DC has gone scoreless the last three minutes, so a little change here right before halftime. Reggie just talked about how important the last minute 19 seconds were going to be. And this is exactly the kind of momentum swings that you will see for a team like Temple's playing against a team like VCU. You've got to react to the fact that they're going to make runs at you. And Temple has reacted very well. Riddick picks up his second personal foul. Here's Will Cummins at the free throw line. A little bit indecisive this season, but they think he's kind of straightening out his game at, at the perfect time of the year, certainly, and tomorrow on CBS. Maybe cold outside, but there's one place that's always hot. Hawaii 5 0. That's tomorrow at 10 9 Central, only on CBS. And Dan, that is 17 free throws attempted in the first half by Temple. Only one by VCU. Reason why they're only down by five. Temple's on 11 0 run since it was 41 25. It's a big momentum possession right here before the half. Good point. Brandenburg is picked up by Hollis Jefferson. Hitton's got the ball, setting the screen for Theus. Makes a move on Cummings. Back to a second block for Lee. And a foul. Or is he just knocked out of bounds? Just out of bounds. Lee, he leaves. These Temple Owls in block shots. This is his second. It looks like it just goes right off of Theus as he's out of bounds. That was a really nice job by Lee to come over and by Hollis Jefferson to slide and protect so that there was no pass that could be made. I think Lee there for a second thought he may have gotten the guy as he was taking the shot, and that's why he turned around and kind of walked away in disgust. He said, wait a minute, I was credited with the block shot, and not a foul. I'll tell you what, if you're a friend, don't be. No turnover here on this possession, and you get absolutely the last shot of this half. Off of ECU, 22.2. Now I understand why Fran Duffy had six players on the defensive end trying to go over this habit style of defense by VCU. Because the way they, especially when it's a dead ball situation, and the guy that's taking the ball out of me cannot run the baseline, it looks like there's six guys on the floor, Dan. And Hollis Jefferson telling Cummins and Wyatt, hey, you guys got to help me. It's that Havoc style of defense they talked about. That's what they call this frenetic style. It's mass mouth basketball, in my opinion. They come after you in waves. That's a great job bringing the ball up to the line the real Hollis Jefferson. Cully Wyatt. Theus is defending. Draws the double. It was tipped. Haley got a hand on it. Out of bounds and 1.9 to play in the half. 
Dan Dunphy is the coach right there. He's a pretty good player at LaSalle back in the 60s, and he's talked to his team in that home. And you don't, this does not have to be a situation, Reggie, where you throw it in and shoot it right away. You have time to take a dribble, maybe two. You'd like to catch this ball going to the basket if you can. I would love a, some type of back screen for Hollis Jefferson, though, to try to get something at the rim here. Cummings, Randall, Weber defending. Good if it goes. Not till just a halftime, but VCU goes scoreless the last 349. And Temple ends the first half on an 11 to nothing run. It was a 16 point VCU lead. Halftime is just five. VCU over Temple at the half. Right now, let's take it a great couple in our CBS. VCU is up by 16. Then it becomes a five point game, Dan, with a nice little run by Temple. Temple did a nice job. They finally started making some shots. They started getting the ball to the basket. It was Wyatt and O'Brien leading the offense. Liberty Mutual is going to bring us our halftime statistics as you take a look at the numbers. Well, VCU, they're the bottom half of the Atlantic 10 in three point shooting, about 33%. But Six for six in that first half today. Curious to see if Shaka Smart is going to continue, take the ball to the basket, knock down long range shots. ECU, in fact, scoreless the last 349 of that first half. And here we go now with Khalif Wyatt, who was terrific with his 12 points, leading all scores. He's the only guy in that front with a miss right there and picked up on the play by Randall back out to Wyatt O'Brien with another offensive rebound shoved and fouled inside by the Ram now Khalif Wyatt missed his first two shots of this half but he was outstanding particularly toward the end of that first half as he was able to use his body and his maneuvers to get close to the basket and score he also got to the free throw line Brandenburg just picked up his third, so he's gone. Weber comes in for the Rams. This is your friend Duffy, the start of this second half, back-to-back -back offensive rebounds, which has allowed Tempo the first three possessions. And there you see the th first three shots of this half. White misses the first two, gets fouled on the third, and going to the free throw line for the 18th and 19th time today. Reggie, that is now 14 personal fouls that have been called against VCU and only three against Temple, and that's the product of the defensive pressure that VCU is trying to apply. They have to play good defense without fouling. Trevion Graham picks up his second personal foul. Don't get caught waiting on the bubble. Racket games are bad, and now open to join. Create your own group. Or compete against the nation at cbssports.com slash brackets. Well, 18 free throw attempts by Temple. There's number 19 right there. They're now 15 of 19. VCU has had just one free throw. They average more than 20 free throws a game. They give a lot of credit to Fran Duffy and, and the Temple Owls. Really moving their feet up the defensive end and not putting themselves in position to foul. Thomas Jefferson is defending Trevion Graham. He gets inside for two and draws the foul. And that, that's a tough matchup for anyone, especially in the Atlantic 10. Trevion Graham, the best scorer on this Rams ball club, just goes right at the chest of Hollis Jefferson. Like Hollis Jefferson did a pretty good job of keeping his hands up, but at that last moment, extended that arm for contact on Graham. That ends a 13-0 run by Temple. And that was created by the fact that Troy Daniels was working out on the perimeter and T.J. Giglio was guarding him, so nobody helped Jefferson. I'm not sure how Jefferson can guard Graham one-on-one. -on -one. Here's DeLeo, who's dads with the Philadelphia 76ers as a general manager. Great-looking three-point shot put in there by Scooty Randall. He's got two triples. Dan, you mentioned this in the first half, that they really needed Scooty Randall's offense. Looked like on senior day, he's really coming to deliver that. That first three he took was really off balance and hurried, and it appeared that that wrecked his confidence for a short time. Khalif Wyatt keeps it alive. <laughs> He's staying balanced. He's a circus act. Hollis <laughs> <laughs> Jefferson. Temple coming in, having won six consecutive games. Getting a win for their tournament resume. ECU is trying to get a share of a conference regular season championship to St. Louis University, DeLeo. Hollis Jefferson with four to five. Reddick was in there fighting for the ball. It's off of Graham and off of VCU. We talked about a circus act, Kev. Look at that. Tight rope <laughs> along the baseline. <laughs> That's pretty good right there. That is Pogo stick. He really has great body control. Yeah. 
He's been a big five basketball player of the week four times this year. Bryant with a three. Screen by Alice Jefferson. Reddick comes up with the loose ball. Here comes VCU. I thought Wyatt was forcing those threes. He's better going to the basket. He needs to get back to that. Foul on the perimeter. It's on Wyatt. He was watching Phoenix. Wyatt just picks up his first personal foul of the afternoon. And he needs to stop doing that. We, we were mentioning that at practice. A lot of times on the defensive end, Wyatt gambles too much, puts his team as well as himself, as he just saw right there, picking up the foul in bad position. Reddick across the lane. He's found success today. Hit that by Wyatt. He leads Temple in points and assists. So I'm just wondering who other than Wyatt or Jacob Ryan with 10 surprising points in that first half is going to be able to put the ball in the basket. Scooter Rando started this half with that three. He's got to be that third option offensively for the Owls. The Hollis Jefferson has not scored a field goal in the game, and he's usually a pretty big offensive threat. Wyatt missed it all. Weber comes up with it. Here comes VCU. The shot well all afternoon. He's rejected right there by Scooty Randall. Coming the other way, Khalif Wyatt. And O'Brien, who's been hitting from three, as he'll search right now. See, Hollis Jefferson has a size advantage against Theus. I think he could take him inside. Well, so does Scooty Randall against Riante Weber down low. O'Brien with a three. Reddick has the rebound, oh, and he's now collected six. I don't know. If you're Jake O'Brien, you couldn't have shot that ball any better in and out from about 25 feet. Great steal, and Wyatt will take it in. They've used defense nicely this afternoon to get back in this game. But he doesn't look like he's going very fast, but he gets the job done. <laughs> Wyatt has just picked up his second personal foul with his 16 points today. His friend Dumpy, five consecutive NCAA tournaments, and trying to get his team to a six. The end of the season, saying this is the deepest team he had ever had at Temple. And we've mentioned they've won six consecutive games, but it comes after over a 12 game span. They had lost six and won six. The interesting thing about Temple is they've had some head scratching home losses. Yeah. They lost to Duquesne at home, they lost to Canisius at home. They lost to St. Bonaventure at home, and if you win those games, and they're games you should win, then you're not in this situation where you're struggling to maybe think about an at-large bit. Melvin Johnson has been a sure score all afternoon, now at 10 points. But Dan, to your point, it all comes down to this, though. They've got VCU on a national stage today, and they're in the ball game. 18-5, Temple run. Going back to the end of the last half, a three and for three. Jake O'Brien, a reliable score option off the bench. Seven consecutive games and double figures. Graham tries to drive. DeLeo is right there, and that is a foul. O'Brien's knocked in three from beyond the arc this afternoon. This is only our second tie here early in the second half. Well, a mock selection was held by the NCAA a couple weeks ago. Here's a typical question that they posed to members from the media. You can only pick one school. And, Brad, I'll start with you. Of those three, who do you select? I'm going with Team V. I always like to go with strength of schedule. 58 is the lowest between those two teams. And wins versus the RPI top 50. I know it's not four, but they got three. Team B would be my choice. Dan? Team A would be my choice. I like as a tiebreaker, I like the wins on the road and at the neutral site, and I like the four wins against the RPI top 50. Interesting school. Oh, the mayor, my former teammate, Fred Hoiberg. See, I didn't even know that, and I'm going uh, Iowa State. Look, they had two heartbreaking losses versus Kansas, Iowa State. They win both of those games. They wouldn't even be on this mark. Though. That's when Elijah Johnson had the 39 for Kansas in that overtime game. But you left out Kentucky, and Kentucky, of course, took care of Florida yesterday on CBS. you got to do more than just beat Florida at home. They lost to Georgia on the road. They lost to Arkansas on the road. So Kentucky is a team. I still think they have a chance in the SEC tournament to earn their way in. Now, hold up. This was a mock draft. We didn't know the three teams, so why are you saying we left Kentucky off? We didn't know Kentucky was one of the teams that was there. It was a question mark. Nope, you're on record. We've got it on tape. Oh, it's too my late. goodness. Yeah. We yeah. left Kentucky off. We didn't know Kentucky was mm -hmm. on there. Shows you how tough it is. It's a great thing that the NCAA does 
to bring in members like us to make us in fact our producer Steve Shear was the chairman of the committee so he was he was the head on show and he was overseeing all this stuff but it just goes to show you it's tough. trying to find 68 teams yeah. is a very difficult process you know, the game last night between Belmont and Murray State and a lot of people now are saying Murray State has no shot of getting into the tournament they, they had that game under control Belmont found a way to tie it and win it in overtime going to a new conference very much the same way VCU coming into the ATM from the CAA here comes Cummings that baseline putting them two more I should say placing the 68 teams with the 64 where they should go and selecting the 37 at large you get the 31 automatic and the 37 at large that's that's the run Yes. As Jefferson is on him, Cummings is watching Weber. They go down low to Reddick. O'Brien will defend. Five gone here in the second half. What a great block out by Kelly Fly. What does not he do? He has good position, doesn't he, Dan? When he gets down low, always seems to be in the right spot. O'Brien, nice ball rotation, getting that defense to move. Wyatt by Reddick. O'Brien, another three. <laughs> Weber and the other way. O'Brien has knocked down four threes this afternoon. It's the first Temple lead since 12 10 early in the first half. Tie up right there. One of the reasons that a guy is open from three point range. Now here's O'Brien right here, and watch as Khalif Wyatt takes the ball into the lane and the defense drops down. Briante Weber goes after the ball and leaves the three point shooter open. That's a situation, Reggie, where you have to know who's out on the perimeter. You don't leave him. At least not today, you don't. Double teamed inside, Trevion Graham. Cummings ahead. Randolph floats in for two. Down by 16. Temple is up by five. So a 21 point turnaround in this game. Well, who has the Havoc style and who doesn't? Soccer time out and the VCU Rams. And he has now scored in double figures in seven games in a row. And Reg, you're absolutely right. You get a guy like that who can make threes and you force that defense to come out. It opens up a lot of opportunities for drives by a person like Khalif Watt. Brandenburg is picked up by Hollis Jefferson. Shot clock down to 15. Early stage of second half. Randall comes up with it. And a 7 up and run by Temple. And again, really good defense against the penetration by VCU. And Temple has, for the most part, done that all day long. Senior DeLeo. Brandenburg is on him. Alice Jefferson Lee is now in the contest. He's roving down inside. Cummings on the top, the point guard. 28 7 run by the Temple Owls. After being down by 16, Alice Jefferson inside the <laughs> Almost pulled the Houdini. Vandenberg gets it done. Here's Theus. Now it's Graham and Daniels. Graham has 11. He leaves on 10 for Johnson. They haven't been able to play in transition much in the second half. Well, that's great. Closure there by Scooty Randall. What defense. What defense by DeLeo. Coming, slicing. And Dan, they've made some adjustments, haven't they? This Temple team as the game's gone on. They're hanging on to the ball a little better. And they've done a really nice job. I think Khalif Wyatt got the game under control for them. He's getting a rest right now. But they have not allowed VCU to get out in transition. He leads the conference. Wyatt doesn't score it. So what else has helped though? Them getting to the free throw line and slowing the game down as well. It hasn't allowed that Havoc style to play into this game going up and down. It did early. Mm -hmm. It did early on. But once Temple started to get to the free throw line and slow the ball game down, that's when it started to turn. Well, Butler's head coach Brad Stevens was talking about this the other day. He says, no one is able really to, to simulate the speed. They force you to play the way they want you to play. So Temple has come at him at a, at a, a different angle today. Well, I, the other thing I think was happening in that first half, VCU was making threes, so they were not only putting defensive pressure on him, they were putting offensive pressure on him. And Temple simply didn't react very well, but I do think it was Khalif Wyatt that sort of got him calmed down. 
Right, it gets picked up by Lee. Temple just had their first turnover of the second half. And there's a grab inside and a foul. Trying to poke the ball away, and it comes at the 12.05 mark here of the second half in Philadelphia. The foul goes on Lee, and Reds ends his third of the game. Yeah, and Lee did not need, it was almost like he gave a little sh shoulder shiver there. That's now 16 fouls, though. So the next foul, BCU will be shooting. Something they didn't or weren't able to do in the first half. Only one free throw. Darius Theus. He was the first recruit. Shaka Smart when he came to Richmond and took over the VCU job. Anthony Lee was just a half a second late coming over for that block shot. Temple shooting 41%. UCU 46. Offense looks a little more stagnant without Wyatt in there to control things. That clock is down to six, and that is an offensive foul. They'll put it on. Ramirez mm -hmm. Hollis Jefferson, that's the third. Yeah, Temple yeah. wins today. Many feel it would help them secure a spot in the NCAA tournament. Right now, let's update the AT&T analysis. And we talked before the game about Temple and Khalif Wyatt and about how Wyatt could be such a reliable scorer. And he can score in a variety of different ways. How about these tough shots that he has made? He scored five field goals. He's also got three steals. The easy layup after that one. I'll tell you what, I've been impressed. 42 points, though, between these three players and Wyatt O'Brien and Scooty Randall. 42 of the 53 by Temple. But it's going to take that the rest of this second half here. We want to get this victory over the ranked VCU Rams. Well, Wyatt averages 19, so he is right on track. Randall averages 11. O'Brien averages, there he is, 9. Transfer from BU. But he's an accurate shooter. He's number 9 in the A-10 three-point shooting. Oh, percentage. he does everything. We have Absolutely. Seen it Rand yeah. does everything around here. <laughs> You know, maybe if they win, they'll get him a couple of managers to do that. <laughs> <laughs> he, really, got it. he really ought to speak to his AD about that. I haven't. <laughs> Brandon, Brandenburg, Reddick with a screen. Graham comes around that same screen. This is over Randall. Rebound is pulled down by the point guard Cummings. VCU now have 3 of 11 shooting in the second half. And much as we saw Temple miss some shots in the first half they normally make, that's a shot Graham makes almost all the time. Under 11 now to play. Nice move there by Delia, who's a senior, a fifth senior, and he's usually the first guy off the bench. He starts this afternoon. Well, that was a nice back cut there by Delia. On the move, Reddick, who's had a big afternoon, averages 14, has 10. By the way, DeLeo. Tony DeLeo with a terrific play. And how about Wyatt and the eye contact by DeLeo to recognize that he had to run out after the made basket by Reddick. Outside, Brandenburg picked up by Wyatt. I said, Tony, that's his dad's name. This is TJ, Tony Jr., who's in. And his dad, Tony, who's the GM of the Philadelphia 76ers, in the building today, part of the... Honoring ceremony of the senior class here at Temple. Randall wide open three, picked up by Weber. The first break points clearly in favor of Temple. 13 nothing. And who would have thought that? It's going to with the style and the havoc style of the Rams. Graham spins to get three. Floater inside. Grabbed by DeLeo. And here comes Cummings. By Weber. Outside to Randall. On top to Wyatt. He got by Weber. He throws inside and he'll foul. <laughs> Foul's gonna go on Graham. What a move, huh? <laughs> Talking about a move. How about Tony DeLeo here in the back cut for the easy lay-in? And then on a made basket by Reddick, Khalif Wyatt just looks ahead and recognizes he has a streaking DeLeo. And I like I like this what Wyatt did. He has been struggling with his outside shot, the pump fake. Not settling for that three. Use that side, that 6 4 combo guard to get the contact and go to the free throw line. How about, how about Wyatt, though, Reggie? Anytime anyone gets within breathing distance of him, his head snaps back, <laughs> his shoulder oh. flies out. It looks like as he drives to the basket, people are smashing it. 
that is what you call being a proven scorer. You recognize anyone touches you, hey, that's flopping one on one with the head drop. I was the master at it, Dan. Hey, easy, easy. Inside Reddick. He continues to choose a away from points now with 12. Javante Reddick from Winston Salem, North Carolina. We saw DeLeo head to the bench. Brian is back out there. Hollis Jefferson. We got Wyatt with the ball. Cummings on the side. Well, Hollis Jefferson is getting done so now. The yep. shots he, he had in that first half in the start of the second half. And even though he's gone scoreless, he's, he's got to continue to look at the basket. Just past the nine minute mark, and he traveled. Turnover right there by Khalif Wyatt. Now Tuesday on CBS, critics are calling Golden Boy a riveting and bold new series. See what the buzz is all about. It's Tuesday at 10, 9 Central, right here on CBS. That's a good call there by the official. Absolutely, Khalif Wyatt traveled or carried on that last possession there. Or both. Toyo is in. Reddick will fire. This is over O'Brien. It's picked up by Wyatt. And Wyatt has collected four rebounds. With his game high, 18 points. <laughs> Kevin, and he's dribbling it up the court, having a debate with the referee at the same time. He's doing it all. Toyo with the rejection, the freshman, and a foul. You know, it's interesting because most seniors, especially at home, obviously, on senior day, you want to go out with a victory. Khalif <laughs> Wyatt walking out with his family members. You, you want to leave your last game here. A W. And one of the things, Reggie, I think that has happened is VCU's pressure has not been of effect as effective because of the guy at the free throw line. He's made really good decisions with the ball. They've had a hard time taking it from him. He's made really good passes out of traps. And as a result, I think that defensive pressure, either consciously or subconsciously, has backed off. Lee comes back in. Hollis Jefferson will check out for the Owls. We're playing the Rams today. They played the Rhode Island Rams last Saturday. And this past Wednesday, they took on the Fordham Rams. So for keeping score at home, that's three consecutive games. Only you, Kev. Only you would come up with that. But I tell you what, if you would told me at this point today in this game that VCU would have more turnovers than Temple, I would look at you crazy. It's amazing, because that's the calling card for yeah, Absolutely. Team. Graham takes it inside on O'Brien and will not get it to drop, but he does get the foul. Smart said something interesting just the other day. He said, you know, you got to keep growing. It's March, and the best teams are always getting better. If you're staying the same, you're, you're really falling behind. And I think that that's really true. You have to continue to improve because everybody else is continuing to improve. And he also said something interesting, Kevin. Teams have ups and downs, and you've got to weather those in team play. Well, how did tainted medicine get distributed across the country? 60 Minutes investigates the worst pharmaceutical disaster in decades, plus the powerful woman behind Facebook, Cheryl Sandberg. That's tonight. On the award-winning 60 Minutes. I thought you were asking Dan and myself that question. I, I looked at Dan, I was like, do you know the answer? No, but if we watch 60 Minutes tonight, we shall. Absolutely. Got to keep you guys on your toes. <laughs> I was wondering how that was getting across the country. I want to test that UCLA and Virginia diploma that you guys have. There you go. Well, it's not on par with Kansas, but hey, we're trying, right? You said it. Okay. You said it. <laughs> Eight to play. 21st ranked VCU. Hollis Jefferson. O'Brien comes with the loose ball. Another offensive rebound for him. Cummings quickly gets it on the wing. And they started this second half with three consecutive offensive rebounds. And they're continuing it today in the second half. Temple 43% shooting from the floor. Wyatt the 20. Leaving, driving, fouled on the play. Looked like Theus. Was reaching in seven and a half to play. Temple was down by 16. Now a little some of the numbers and the plus 11 points for Temple and fast break probably as surprising as any with uh, Reggie Miller and Dan Bonner, Kevin Harlan. Let's talk perspective now. Let's talk about with seven and a half to play. What you're seeing, where this game may go. I'm not quite sure that Shaka Smart and this havoc style of defense really has shown us what is really capable of. They haven't forced the turnovers that we know they're capable of doing. I think they have one more run in them where they can turn.
turn Temple over and try to get back into this ball game. Reggie, you told us before the game that when VCU forces 15 turnovers, they're undefeated, and they've got a ways to go. They've only forced nine, and in fact, they've only forced three turnovers in the last 14 minutes or last 20 minutes, excuse me, of game action. So if they're going to make a run, they've got to get back to forcing those turnovers. And they've got to stop fouling Wyatt. Six of six of free throws just in this half alone. So he's going for his seventh and eighth free throw here in the second half today. Wyatt's been terrific, as you mentioned before, leading score in the conference, 19 points a game. He's got 21 right now. Dan, as this Owl team is still alive, one of the top four seeds in the upcoming A-10 postseason tournament in Brooklyn. It's easier, said, the it's easier said than done, not fouling Wyatt. He just has that game where even if you're not fouling him, I'm sure it looks like you're fouling him. Green takes it and rejected by O'Brien. His third block. Nice weak side of help there sure by O'Brien to come over with that block shot. Good timing. Theus. Weber. Reddick tried to go for the loose ball. Picked up by Cummings. Here comes Wyatt again. A full head of steam. And this is where the VCU team is very vulnerable. If they're not making shots and they're not turning you over, that's the recipe of when you can beat this team. Because if you're scoring and settling the tempo, which Temple clearly has done, what's to your favor? Great green ball by Scott Studio Randall. He's got now three threes and a steal right afterwards. And here comes Wyatt. He'll put up a three. I believe Doug McDermott last time those two teams faced went out and got 41 points. 15 of 18 from the field. Graham. Rebound O'Brien, a shove inside will be on the VCU Rams. 21st ranked team in college basketball getting fouled right there. Daniels picks up his third. Tell you what, if you're Fran Duffy, you take away the first 10 minutes of this ball game. You have controlled tempo, pace, style of play. Absolutely what he was looking for for his last game in this building. He was picked up on the play by Fields. Wyatt's got great rhythm this afternoon. Graham with the rebound. Graham, Brandenburg a three. Let's see if that gets VCU going a little bit. Double trail by 16 points. Held VCU scoreless for almost four minutes to finish off the first half. An 11 nothing run right there. Since that time, they've outscored them 43, 43 to 15. Temple over VCU. It's been an amazing turnaround in this contest. On senior day, the Temple team that's won six consecutive games against a Ram team that has won eight of nine. Shot clock at two. The twirling. Dan, how many times have we seen that tonight? That nice little pearl move by Wyatt in the lane to finish. Brandenburg takes it inside. Reddick comes up with the loose ball. Fends off O'Brien and finds the deuce. And that's just an example. We saw that a couple times in the first half. They're able to get the penetration and then the offensive rebound because of the, def the way the defense reacts to it's the been a pretty good run today, too. <laughs> in Khalif Wyatt, the leading scorer in the conference, a 26-point performance this afternoon and leading the way, digging him out of a hole, which was, like I said, one time, 16 points for the Owls. Wyatt has 10, Temple's last 13. VCU all has six this season when trailing at the five-minute mark. See how they handle it right now. They're trying to share the title in the A-10. A throw away. Vacuumed in by O'Brien. Shot clock at 17. And you know why it maintains a running com commentary out there. <laughs> Cummings! Tell you what, that was 
great patience by Temple on that possession. Easily could have been rattled, didn't turn the basketball over, took some time off the shot clock, and coming with the three. Well, that's what happens. Guest laying a screen, and that's illegal, and that is a foul on Jared Guest. Guest will pick up another one. Hollis Jefferson drives inside. You see all the black shirts go to the basketball, and that leaves Cummins wide open on the outside. Cummins not known as a three-point shooter. He's only 25% in A-10 play. Well, I'll tell you what, in, in practice yesterday, he looked like he was Steve Kerr out there knocking down threes. <laughs> Seven threes for the Rams, nine threes for the Owls. He's a little bit faster than Steve, I think. I'll be sure to tell him you said that, Dan. I'm just going to play now. So this is where it's really difficult to mount a comeback. The guy who's got the ball in his hands is really tough with it, and if you foul him, he's going to go to the line and make free throws. Here's Cummings. And the guy he threw it, he threw it to in Cummings, very crafty and getting pretty good at getting to the basket. From behind, Weber knocked it away. Weber Kevin, Kevin, you're absolutely right. If, he, if Temple wins today, they become the number three seed, LaSalle becomes the number four seed, and Butler becomes the number five seed and slides over there into that first round game against Charlotte. It's all about that first round bye, too, because a lot could happen on those first days. Guys can twist the ankle. You know, the, the less court time you have and the more rest is definitely more pivotal for your team. Cummings has 12. He averages six. His shot has been off all season. He's now five of five from the free throw line. This is arguably his best game of the year. Remember Juan Fernandez, when he had the, the keys to this car, he was a yes, terrific player yes. yes. for such a long time. This kid's taking his place today in a very important game, doing a good job. Graham with the Reddick screen. Reddick going inside on Graham grabs it. The galloping Hollis Jefferson off to Cummings. He is earning his stripes today. Can I remember what we said about Temple, number 11 in the country in protecting the basketball? He's just given Temple their biggest lead today. Under three to play. One great short shooting from him as Graham takes it inside. Trevion Graham comes up with his 15th. They've got to force some turnovers. Temple's only got nine. They only average 11 a game, and they're not there yet. Cummings. Picked up by Darius Theus, and he'll race the other way for the Rams. To Reddick into O'Brien. Timeout. Shocker smart. And there's the turnover you were talking about forcing. Getting an easy one in transition. But Jake O'Brien, senior day. Jake O'Brien, number 22 there, has been terrific with his 5 3. His reliable scoring option off the bench all season long. He was from. Weymouth, Massachusetts, he went to Boston University where he was a captain, but this past summer he transferred. He played three seasons for BU, over a thousand points he scored. Redshirted last year, Dan, he had foot injury that required two surgeries. He's coming back, he's on solid footing today. Kevin, he actually missed the entire calendar year of 2011 playing basketball. He got hurt in December 2010, didn't play at all in 2011. The three was falling for BCU back in the first half, but not here in the second. There's not that many. Inside, Hollis Jefferson. And a foul. He almost missed that basketball from the pass by Wyatt. You've got to have your head on a swivel there. He had a wide open dunk. If he could have caught it flush. If he would have not been surprised. Mm -hmm. Correct. And one of the things you can't be, Reggie, if you're a big guy next to the basket, you can't be surprised when the ball lands in your hands. <laughs> well, also, you've got to have eyes on the ball as well. You can't have your back turned to the basketball. Lear Hollis Jefferson, from Chester, Pennsylvania, first team all state, senior, two year starter. Out of this great senior class, five seniors start today, including three graduate students. The coach. 
Fran Dunphy, a two-time A-10 Coach of the Year, now in his seventh season after a prestigious 17-year coaching career at Penn. John Cheney left. Dunphy took over. Approaching two to play. Theus around O'Brien, and a foul called on Jake O'Brien. 15-point lead for Temple. O'Brien picks up his third in the Missouri Valley Conference Championship from St. Louis. Wichita State and Creighton. Creighton's got a pretty good little play on their team. Oh, yeah. McDermott has been a, a mainstay in the college well, I would have seen for a couple of years here. I wouldn't call him a little play. I'm, I'm <laughs> saying it just as you said. Yeah, he's, he's uh, in a smaller conference, made a lot of big waves, hasn't he? Now Shaka Smart bringing in Briante Weber. His full court defensive stopper. Along with Theus. Got a three. Some turnovers here. Just a little over two minutes left in this second half. Oh, Weber with the steal. Off the Reddick with the great spin. And he's got 18. Just a perfect example of how quickly they can score. What a hustle there by Weber. Not only to get your hands on it, going out of bounds to save it. Yeah, there is Theus have not had a lot of steals today, and they're the best tandem in college basketball at that point. Making a quick move once again. He's not down 28 points this afternoon for the Owls. You can't guard that. Yeah. Reddick. Trouble. How about that there by Fran Duffy and these Temple Owls? That was a little bit of a havoc style play right there. Looks like Reddick got a little bit of confused when he got the, the basketball in the in the paint area. Well, Fran sure looks excited about it, doesn't he? <laughs> He's a circling over seventh consecutive win as a timeout. They grab a timeout or do they just fall out of bounds? Take a timeout here. Timeout. A turnover. Yeah, he stepped out of bounds. Yeah, he did, but it looked like they were going to call a timeout on the VCU bench. Now they only have the one remaining, as you can see, with Temple having three. And Troy Daniels will inbound to Theus. Couple of threes, couple of turnovers. Graham and O'Brien, along with Alice Jefferson, were in there defending. Boy, this O'Brien, a new career high with five threes for the Owls this afternoon. He's had a big day, and we've talked about him making three-point baskets, and that's what you expect from him. But he's rebounded, he's blocked shots, he has contributed in a variety of ways for the Temple Owls. It's been a very complete performance by Jacob O'Brien. Thomas Jefferson picked up his fourth personal foul. Here is Jimmyon Graham at the free throw line, a 72% free throw shooter. And Dan, isn't that what you want from your seniors, especially yes. on days like this when you're going against a ranked team? You're fighting your way, hopefully, to get into the dance. You want your seniors to step up, show up, and perform on the biggest stage. 82 points by Temple this afternoon, fifth time. In the last eight games, if they have scored 80 plus points. And I think Hollis Jefferson has really been a help against this pressure, particularly in the second half. Now there's an offensive foul against Wyatt, but Jefferson's ability to handle the ball against Reddick, and Reddick can't take it from him, I think has been key. But here, Reddick, he can't steal the ball, but he moves his feet and gets in Wyatt's road. Now, Fran Dumpy's a little excited. He was excited about that call. <laughs> Graham and open three. Late close there by Hollis Jefferson. Picked up nicely. Inside by VCU. Back and forth at went with a foul called on the Rams, and it goes on Darius Theus. He will be assessed his third. Another costly turnover for the VCU Rams. They get a second shot opportunity. It looked like Brandenburg kind of got sped up. Trying to get the ball out around the perimeter. Temple has taken 29 free throw shots this afternoon, main 24. VCU is 10 of 10 from the free throw line. Kevin, one of my 
thoughts about a guy who's a great free throw shooter is that you really have to want to go to the free throw line. Yeah. I've never seen a guy who wants to go to the free throw line as badly as Khalif Fly. <laughs> yeah, you're sitting next to one right here. And Look, it's a form it. of scoring, you know, and it's an easy way, especially as much pressure Wyatt has taken over the last few years being the offensive leader on this team. When you get a chance just to get free throws and fouls, it's an easy way to score. Fran Dumphy's done a terrific job with this program. Right now, they're eyeing a possible sixth consecutive NCAA tournament appearance. They had a 12-game span where they, Dan Rowley, as we talked about earlier, went six and six. But then they turned things around. They've won six consecutive games. Number seven is on their doorstep right now, a minute away. They're peaking, it looks like, at the right time. And you got, when you've got guys in the backcourt like Cummings and Wyatt who handle the ball as effectively as they have handled it today, you're tough to beat. Fias with a bad looking three. Reddick across the lane and Reddick puts in his 20th point Reddick. and he averages 14 a game. And this is why I love Wyatt in this press break situation because of his size at 6'4. He can look over Brandenburg and Fias. up by Reddick, and that is all she wrote in Philadelphia. A big time win for the Owls. That will count by Melvin Johnson right there for them three, making it an eight point game. Temple and Senior Day wins their seventh consecutive game. They go to 23 and 8. They've won 9 of 10, and they beat number 21 VCU.